There's no doubt that COVID-19 has brought challenges to us all, safety challenges, employment challenges, and getting the job done. Thankfully, we've got wonderful relationships between the private sector and the government sector so that we can continue doing business so you've got a place to live. I've got the president of the Florida Home Builders Association, Michael Bore, here with us today to share how their association is doing all they can do to keep people employed, to keep construction going so that you have a beautiful home or building to live in. Michael, welcome to the program. Wally, thank you so much for having me. So the Florida Home Builders Association, how many members do you have? We have over 9,000 members in the state. And those 9,000 members, how many Floridians do you reason they employ? Oh gosh, I, I, I don't know if I could give you a number to that, but we, we certainly make up a, a broad swath of the, uh, the employment and the labor force in our state. So from an employment perspective, Michael, what are we doing to be sure, and safety has always been important to us, but specific to COVID-19, how are we keeping that job site safe? Absolutely, that's a great question. So, you know, COVID-19 presents some unique challenges uh, to not just our industry, but obviously the world and our country. Um, and so we've, uh, at, at Florida Home Builders Association, we've worked closely with DBPR um, in, in, in order to create um, best practices on the job site. And, uh, and we do that really by using common sense, uh, social distancing, which we've all heard about uh, for the last several weeks. Um, using hand sanitizing stations, uh, you know, on the, on the job site, requiring crews when they come on the job site to sanitize themselves. When they leave the job site, again, use hand sanitizer, make sure that you're clean. Um, and, you know, really just maintain the, the uh, gap so that this virus does not continue to spread, uh, you know, both on our job sites amongst our members, uh, right. but, you know, also, you know, across the country. Excellent. So if I'm looking to buy a home, recognizing that each builder in each municipality is executing their own protocol, what's the best practice for me as a home buyer who's still interested in buying a new home? How do I approach that, that model or that builder? Okay. Um, several of our builders, uh, a, a lot of the nationals and some of our local builders uh, across the state are moving towards a more virtual way of buying a home. Uh, so I would certainly visit the different builders that are in your area, visit their websites, uh, not necessarily visit them right now, uh, but you know, visit their websites, see if they offer virtual purchasing, uh, which is a unique way to be able to look at the product, walk through the product from the safety of your own home, uh, correspond back and forth with your, uh, either, either your site agents or your general real estate agent uh, in order to make sure that, uh, that you've got all your questions answered, you know exactly what it is you're buying, uh, and then you can move forward with the uh, w with the purchase of your new home. If I had the thought in my mind, Mike, I I'll do all that, so I'm almost 99% certain. Would it be reasonable then to you know reach out to the builder? We already would have been communicating and arrange for a safe visit just to be sure. Well, I I, th I think common sense obviously comes to play there. Um, I, I personally would want to see the product that I'm buying but we have to maintain the guidelines that the president right. has established for us. And so uh, with that being said, if there is a way, uh, in other words, there's no, uh, you know, there's no symptoms, there, the house is vacant, you have an opportunity uh, just to go in and walk around and then leave, assuming it's a spec house, right. uh, then, then, then I would certainly look at that opportunity. But, um, but uh, again, we need to follow the guidelines of the federal government and, and safety of our, of our elderly, safety of our citizens and safety of our construction workers is, is obviously paramount. So we want to make sure we're following those. And how are you, Mike, as the president of the association, interacting with the governor and his staff and, and the local builders associations interacting with mayors? And how is the, are the associations assuring we don't get shut down? That's a great question. Um, so that is one of the biggest concerns of our industry right now. Uh, we are seeing government agencies across the state in certain pockets uh, that are shutting down or at least retracting services that they offer. And so we've worked very closely with Governor DeSantis's office uh, through all of this, uh, really uh, helping to show him and his staff that construction is an essential service. It needs to be uh, online and available yeah. for the citizens of Florida. And, uh, and so it, it, it is by definition an essential service. Um, I, I will tell you, I've been very, very proud of our executive officers across the state at our local home builders associations. Uh, very proud of the staff across the state that have been working very hard to make sure that uh, the, the, the voice of the association of, of, of its members is being heard. Uh, and then of course, all the local presidents, you know, everybody has just pulled together. It is, um, uh, is awe-inspiring, quite frankly, to see how much work has come together in such a short period of time 
Um, and so we've, again, worked very closely with the governor's office. We, we have weekly update phone calls with all the uh, uh, executive officers across the state to share ideas, to, to, to talk about what's going on in their areas, and really to keep up also with the governmental changes that are happening in each individual uh, jurisdiction. Uh, you know, Miami's doing something different than West Palm Beach that's doing something different than yeah. Tampa, than Jacksonville. And so, um, you know, so these different areas um, are, are dealing with it a little bit differently in some cases. And so as a state, we come together and we communicate and we share ideas and, uh, again, trying to be proactive and make sure that our members are, are as protected as we can as we can make them. Right. I want to thank Michael Bore for being with us. And I want you also to be aware that whether it's Michael or your local building uh, Builders Association president, they're all really running businesses and doing what they're doing for the community, doing what they're doing for the profession is in addition to running their own businesses. So let's do all we can do to safely uh, encourage our, our politicians to allow us to remain in business and do the best you can to uh, get on out there and purchase a home rapidly and safely.